This video is sponsored by Darren Enner. All right, power off in three, two, one. All right. Here we are. Turn out a flashlight. There we go. Okay, still running the program, no problem. Go ahead and turn the power back on. I am extremely grateful to my father-in-law for allowing me to use the double car side of a three car garage as my temporary workshop while I wait for my home to be finished being built. But one thing that's less than ideal about this temporary workshop is the power. Whoever built and wired this garage, not my father-in-law, decided for some reason that this entire three car garage would be just fine with just one single 15 amp circuit. <laughs> okay, a 15 amp circuit can't power a whole lot. It pretty much can use one power hungry appliance like a shop vac or a space heater or something like that. And that's about it. Kick on another appliance and bam, out goes the circuit and lose power to everything, right? And so especially with a garage where I got people, you know, that don't know what I'm doing in here outside hitting the garage door opener or on the other side of that wall, there's an outlet on the same circuit where they plug in a vacuum cleaner or something like that and bam, knocks out the power to the entire garage. Not exactly ideal for someone like me who not only is running high powered tools in my workshop, but also CNC machines on a regular basis. Those of you guys that follow my channel, you know I've been doing a lot more CNC work. And if you guys dabble in CNC at all, you know that once a program starts running, if it stops midway through the program for whatever reason, it's just about impossible to restart that program from where it left off. If you're doing a six hour carve on a CNC mill, for example, and you lose power at five hours, then you pretty much have to start over from the beginning and just carve air for five hours until you get to the last hour of the carve. And even worse for a CNC laser, a laser beam is only 0.01 millimeters thick. So I don't care how good you are, you are never gonna get it to line up properly and cut or engrave in the same spot. You're gonna end up with a blurry double vision image. And so it's incredibly important that once you start your uh, CNC program that you're able to run it start to finish without any interruptions. And so that's why this uninterruptible power supply is the hands down best upgrade you can make to any CNC machine. And so I love having this uninterruptible battery backup supply because if the power goes out when I'm in the middle of using a tool, whatever tool I'm using will still keep going. Now, of course, that's been extremely helpful when I'm running my CNC machines. In fact, if you caught my video a couple weeks ago on the longer Ray 20, all of the cutting and engraving that I did in that video, I actually did entirely off of the battery backup, not even plugged into the wall, just running strictly on battery power. I didn't mention that in the video, but I was still testing this battery and I gotta say, I'm extremely impressed. So I am waiting here in the parking lot, getting ready to meet someone from Facebook Marketplace to purchase a chop saw. And uh, this is a perfect opportunity to use this battery here because I wanna be able to test to make sure it works, but I'm meeting them in a parking lot. So this is just another really handy reason why having a portable battery backup is a really good idea. So let's plug this bad boy into here. All right. Uh, we're gonna do another sort of real world test here. I'm gonna run a program on my CNC and while it's carving it out, I am going to actually walk back to the breaker box and flip the breaker and see what happens. See if this CNC machine can continue running its program uninterrupted. That'll be very interesting. It'll also tell us exactly how much wattage is being drawn and a prediction of how long the battery will last. And so I'll have a good idea of how long I can run my machine completely on battery backup power. So. Let's go ahead and give this a shot and see what happens. All right, it's running. Let's go ahead and give it a little bit of a head start and then I'll flip the breaker. All right, 
Time to flip the breaker. Can't believe I'm doing this. Let's see what happens. All right, power off in three, two, one. All right. Here we are. Turn out a flashlight. There we go. Okay, still running the program, no problem. Let's uh, have a look over here at the battery. Okay. It says it's drawing currently about 200 watts. And uh, yeah, we got 11 and a half hours left on the battery life. This card is only a 30 minute card. Still running, no problem. All right, go ahead and turn the power back on. Alright, so for the CNC laser test demonstration that we're going to do, I tried to set it up a little bit more cohesively so you can see the UPS right here um, at the same time that you see the laser when I cut the power off so you can see how quickly this thing switches over to the backup power. And for this test, I'm going to be using my Xtool D1 Pro. This is a laser you've not seen me use a ton on this channel, but it is one that I use a ton behind the scenes for my guitar building business. Excellent laser. But basically right here, I have the UPS and I have this power strip plugged into it. And on this power strip, I have the X tool. I've got my computer. I've got the air assist as well as the box fan for blowing the smoke away. And so all that's gonna be running off of the battery once I cut out power. And I'm gonna be making a custom pit guard for a client. So this is a real job. And that's how confident I am in this backup power supply that I can cut the power at the circuit uh, for the entire garage in the midst of cutting a product out for a client. So let's see how this goes. All right, so I gave it a good head start. Let's go ahead and kill the power. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on the battery here. You can see that we are currently using 150 watts about to run all the appliances. My computer, the uh, laser, the air assist, the fan, all that stuff. Um, and it's saying that I have about 15 hours of battery life on this. So I can literally run it pretty much all day and for longer if I turned off the air assist and the fan. Um, and of course I could even unplug my computer because it's a laptop. But uh, that's pretty darn impressive. So going back to the laser, you can see it's still cutting just fine. Fan's still going, air assist is still going. Yeah, extremely helpful tool. Wish I knew about this before. Now I'm gonna kick the power back on so you can see how seamlessly it transitions back to normal AC power. So now since we used a little bit of its power, it's blinking because it's charging a little bit, but it's not gonna take very long for it to charge back to full. And while it's charging, it's passing through all the power needed to continue running this laser project. But I actually have everything in this garage now being powered off of the Neo 2000 uh, power station. So in the case of a power failure, for example, my space heater can continue running, preventing all of my you know expensive stains and dyes and things from freezing, which would ruin them. All right, so I haven't officially started reviewing this thing yet. Um, as you can see, I'm just kind of in the testing phase. It's not really set up pretty ready for camera or anything. Got the manual still sitting on top of it and just a rat's nest of wires. Um, but we kind of have a real world application test this morning. A winter storm passed over our home last night um, and we got about, I don't know, six or eight inches of snow maybe. And uh, about an hour ago, the power went out. So I just got a flashlight on me right now, but the whole garage has gone dark. 
um, and this battery backup is still running. And I forgot that I left my space heater because I'm pretty much powering my entire workshop, all my tools and stuff off of this thing just to you know really run it through the ringer. And so I had a space heater plugged in and it's currently running. You can see down here that it's drawing about 825 watts is what it says. So there's three settings on that space heater, you know, low, medium, and high. It's on the medium setting, which I guess is, is about 800 watts. And uh, I can see that I have about 78% battery left. It's been running that space heater for about uh, almost an hour now. So my guess is that if I leave the space heater on that setting, that it would probably run it for close to four hours, which is pretty impressive. Uh, we'll see how accurate the percentage timer is and stuff like that. But I think I'm actually going to kick the space heater down to the lowest setting because all I really want is for my paints and stains and stuff to not freeze. Um, so I just have it tucked away in the corner there where I store that stuff. So this is really good for CNC work because you can monitor how much your CNC machines are drawing power and kind of gauge, you know, how much time you have left on your battery, um, especially if that that uh, timer gauge is accurate, then you don't even have to do the math, but you can keep an eye on how much power you're actually drawing. And so obviously my testing isn't done yet. It's just began, but uh, I am excited that I do get to see how well this thing lasts in a winter storm to keep my garage warm. So very cool. All right. So I've been checking on this thing periodically and it has now been about three and a half hours since the power went out and this thing finally died. And it was drawing, you know, for that first hour about 800 watts and for the last two and a half hours, a, a little over 500 watts. And so unfortunately that means the uh, estimated time remaining gauge is not quite right. It said that I had about three and a half hours and it lasted an additional two and a half hours. And so that gives me a good ballpark estimate though. If I'm drawing between five and 800 watts, um, I can probably expect reliably about three hours worth of working time. So that's good to know. But that just goes to show you how important it is to have a battery backup, uh, not just for your garage and your workshop and your tools, but you could use this to power your home as well or you know, special appliances like a refrigerator or something. The power goes out, you don't wanna lose all of your food. You can plug that thing in and run your refrigerator off of it for a really long time. So this is kind of exciting to get to give you guys an update because I think the last time you saw my property, it looked a little something like this and now, it looks like this. And in fact, I was sitting right there asking you guys to pray that we could drill a well that hits water. And as you can see, not only did we get water, we got plenty of it. So everything's looking sweet. Got our new house that we just moved into. Why am I telling you this? Well, it's because uh, I have another use that I'm gonna need that battery for. You see these two sheds over here? Well, firstly, I need to move them up closer to the house so that I can connect them to power. But let me get to the other side of the house so I can show you what I'm talking about. But first, this is the view outside my front door. How amazing is that? Such a blessing. Thank you guys for your prayers. But over here, you can see I leveled out this pad for these two sheds to move up over to here. And eventually the plan is to do a proper get permits run a 100 amp sub panel from the house to the sheds so they can get their own dedicated power supply. But for now, once I get them moved, I'm gonna be running them off of this one single 20 amp circuit. And so, as you can tell, that's not much better than the 15 amp circuit that my workshop is currently using. And that outlet shares the same circuit as every exterior outlet on the house. So if we have anything else plugged in around the house, it's gonna be sharing that same circuit. So having this battery backup is gonna be amazing because I'll still be able to run my CNC machines in my sheds once I get them moved up here. Another benefit is that I am on a plan with my power company where off-peak hours are extremely cheap electricity. And then between the hours of 4 and 7 p.m., it's like 20 times the cost or something like that. Ridiculous. And so during those hours, I can just shut off the power and run my CNC machines completely off of battery backup for those three hours. And I won't have to pay a dime for electricity to run them. How cool is that? Now you guys can see here the amount of sunlight that my property gets, okay? It rises over those hills, comes up over here, and then it sets 
over that hill over there. So it's in broad daylight all day. And so a goal of mine is to eventually get my entirely all electric house off grid with solar. And something that I didn't mention is that in addition to being a uninterruptible power battery backup using uh, lithium phosphate batteries, the NEO 2000 power station actually has inputs for solar panels with a built-in charge controller. So if this little 20 amp circuit over here by my air conditioner isn't cutting the mustard, instead of having to spend a whole lot of money running a sub panel from the other side of the house all the way over to here, I can just invest in a couple of solar panels and I'd be able to power my sheds no problem with all this beautiful sunlight here in sunny Arizona. As you can probably tell, I am pretty much extremely enamored by the NEO 2000 portable power station. Uh, it's honestly a tool that I wish that I had gotten a long time ago, uh, especially living and traveling full time in an RV and running my workshop out of an RV. Uh, I probably would have saved a lot of diesel fuel running the generator if I had had one of those uh, to begin with. And so I'm just very excited for the possibilities. I mean, obviously I've already put it to really good use and I plan to continue to put it to good use, especially since, you know, I'm not done traveling just because I've settled down and I have a new house. Uh, doesn't mean we're going to stop traveling. Uh, still definitely plan to do plenty of camping. And uh, once we sell our motor home, we're going to buy a smaller RV to keep traveling. And so having that power station is going to be very handy. So I got links down in the description where you can pick up one of these things if you're interested. Um, but if you are into CNC work, that alone is a good enough reason to own one of these and all the other benefits of it is really just icing on the cake. So I'm gonna keep you up to date. I think you guys might actually want to see how I move these sheds. Uh, it's gonna be very interesting. So I'll probably be uploading a video shortly on getting my new sheds set up and ready to be workshops. And uh, thanks for watching. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars and I will see you in that next video.